this is a quick overview of what is a civil standby. Why do courts order them? And from the perspective of a practicing lawyer in the Puget Sound region who has asked for civil standbys in uh, every court, from Everett to Redmond to Bellevue to Seattle to Tacoma to Olympia uh, and all of the city courts, almost all the city courts in between, what's the smartest way to put one together and, and to use it? Well, civil standby is just a term of art that describes when a police officer goes to a residence or to a location uh, business and is not there to investigate a crime or to arrest somebody but is there to stand by and make sure a situation remains civil. Typically courts will order uh, civil standbys uh, in either a protection order setting, in a civil setting, or in a criminal setting, in particular almost always domestic violence. Uh, why? Well what happens in um, the courts issue orders that prevent somebody, uh, generally my client, from going to a specific location or having contact with a specific person. There's a variety of names for that order, but that's typically what happens. The problem is if my client uh, needs his passport uh, the next day, if he wears uh, suits to go to work, if he needs basic toiletries, if he needs some his computer, what's he to do if he needs these belongings and the court's entered an order that says that he can't go to a residence or to a location. Typically as a defense attorney I would ask the court to issue a civil standby and I would list out specifically the items that I'm looking to make sure that my client can get a hold of. A civil standby is not a substitute for uh, emptying a house. You're going to have somewhere between 10 minutes to 30 minutes depending on which police department uh, you get a hold of, how busy they are, how many other calls come in. Civil standbys are their lowest priority, but still a priority uh, to, um, um, to, to do. So. Uh, what happens is that the court will issue a civil standby and then I'll talk to my client and I'll make sure that my client with a witness or with a third party or multiple third parties calls the non-emergency phone number of the uh, local police department that is uh, has the jurisdiction where the residence is or the work is and uh, the police department will tell them that they'll contact them when they're going to send an officer out to their location. What typically happens is my client waits with his witness or, or witnesses outside the scope of their restraining order, the order that prevents them from going within 500 feet of the residence or 500 feet of the, of the workplace. I recommend generally half a mile away so that there's no confusion. And they wait for the officer to escort them in uh, to uh, the house or to the residence and get the belongings that in our case generally we always try to have listed out so there's no dispute about what they're taking. Um, why use a witness? Uh, we have seen in every imaginable situation and what can happen is that somebody will go with the intention of issuing a civil standby and the alleged victim will see them and think that they're stalking them or the alleged victim will call in and say that they're violating the distance restriction. If you have a witness around and you are well outside the distance restriction but close enough that the officer can conveniently stop off and escort you on the way in, uh, it assures that there's no more false accusations or misunderstandings, which is the last thing you need in these kinds of settings. Because uh, when courts order that you don't have contact with the victim or don't have contact with a specific location, these are really serious orders from the court's perspective. And it, because if you can't abide by that basic directive, the court has serious doubts of whether you're going to listen to the court and whether you're rational and reasonable. And violating these orders are an automatic criminal charge uh, if it's proven. It's a gross misdemeanor with 365 days and a $5,000 fine maximum. So you just don't want to, even if you didn't violate it, you don't want to go through the headache of having to argue it. So bring a third party witness with you and um, Make sure your lawyer tries to list out the belongings in advance that you're going to be grabbing. Um, spend some time talking with your lawyer about what your life is like and what's going on. Your lawyer should talk to you about that. And that's generally what, um, uh, what civil standbys are used for, and, and that's the best way to go about using them. Thank you.